Good evening and welcome to the City of David Men's Bible Study. It's not the third Thursday of the month, it's the fourth Thursday of the month. We delayed it one week, um, but, but it's still that time. It's time for our uh, Men's Bible Study. Everyone is welcome, but this conversation is about the men, for the men, and by the men. Um, I think it's important that men get together. Iron does sharpen, sharpen iron. I think it's important that men get together and men have an opportunity to bounce their ideas, their thoughts, their dreams, their hopes uh, off of one another. Uh, it, it helps us to grow, helps us to uh, matriculate through this process of life, this Christian life, um, and be better uh, leaders, be better fathers, be better husbands, uh, be better brothers, be, be better sons. Uh, this 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 idea of us, this concept of us as men uh, coming together in unity, it is like precious oil. Uh, so tonight uh, we're here again, uh, men's Bible study for the city of David, still working with uh, Dr. Miles Monroe's book, uh, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Men, God's Design for male identity. We're in chapter 5 tonight. Before we continue, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for our lives, God. We ask that your will be done, Father, that, that the things that are bound in heaven are bound here on earth. Father, we, we bind healing. We bind deliverance. We bind liberty. We bind freedom, Father. We bind the opportunity. We bind salvation, God. We believe that Jesus is your son, that he lived, walked the earth, uh, died, was risen, was hung on a cross, and then rose, God, and now sits on your right-hand right side and intercesses for us. God, we thank you for all that you are doing. We ask that you would bless this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are on and in chapter 5. We are in chapter 5. The the title of this chapter where we are tonight is Dominion versus Domination. God's plan for man, Dominion versus Domination. You know, God created men and women to dominate the earth, not each other. We, we have to go back to our, our, our foundational scripture, uh, both male and and females were created in God's image. Genesis 1 and 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Sometimes this scripture is misappropriated. God created not just man in this scripture, but God created man Kind. God created the species. God created uh, the male and female image and essence of himself. God created them. Male and female created he them. And then in Genesis 1 and 28, he gave us our assignment, both mankind's assignment. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. An increase in number. Uh, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. You know, Pastor Fitzgerald, D'Amico preached uh, Sunday that, that this be fruitful and increase in number is a, a command for us to reproduce ourselves not just physically, not just in babies, but in the Christology and the idea of who we are. To what, what are he, he challenged us, and this has stuck with me since he said it. He challenged us about what are we reproducing? What, 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 what am I reproducing on a daily basis based on my actions, based on the things that I do. What type of life are people seeing that might make them want to emulate who I am? Am I being fruitful? Am I, am, am I, am I increasing in number? Am I helping to spread the word that Jesus saves? 
the basis of both men and women, the equality of both men and women before God is that man the spirit, man the spirit, not man the gender, but man as in mankind, the creation of God resides in the both of us. Our essence is the same. We are the same male and female. We are the same in God. Spiritually, that which God created is in the both of us. Our physical purposes are different. We look different. We have different physical purposes. We were designed with different purposes to fulfill. Our individual strengths, what's strong about a man, What's strong about a woman, when you put these together, our individual strengths produce exponential results when combined. We, men and women, are better together. You know, I, I really have to say that again. We, we, men and women, are better together. You know, I just got married recently. And, and, and I've been single a long time. And, and I, I'm sure that I, that I thought and knew that I was doing just fine all by myself. But what I have realized in this union of, 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 of having a wife is, is that I'm better. It, it, it's no question that she completes my circle and, I, and I'm better. I'm, I'm better than I was as a unit. We are much stronger than I was as an individual, the woman adds to the man's power in living and working so that the sum is far greater than its parts. When you add the man and add the woman, that the, the man is powerful, the woman is powerful. When you put two people together walking in purpose, the sum of both parts is greater than either one of the individuals. So, God created this scenario that everything was perfect. What happened? What, what, what was supposed to be dominion over the earth? Why, why does what was supposed to be dominion over the earth look more like a quest for domination of one sex, one gender over the other? You know, we, we, we're supposed to be walking in, in union. But the reality is that there is conflict and, and discord between men and women, even more so today than it's been in the past. It seems like it's getting worse, that, that there's just no unity between men and women in general, much less men and women in the family, even brothers and sisters. Matter of fact, it's hard to know who's who today. The third chapter of Genesis, when we talk about what happened, the third chapter of Genesis is the answer to the source of the problem that we see today. All the way back to the third chapter in Genesis, where we look at Genesis 3 and 1, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden. You know, the first thing that I see about this is they probably did not the first time they had talked. You know, it wasn't no fear. It wasn't that he, they having a conversation that probably is preceding and probably is based on a previous conversation. They said he's crafty, so he set the place. And, you know, this tells me we need to pay attention to who it is we have in our life, who we listen to, who we talk to, who, who our phone partners are, who we text every day. What type of individuals do we have in our life that can put that, initiate that kind of thought? Did God really say? He started to question God. He's questioning God. You must not eat from any tree in the garden. And Gen then Genesis 3 and 2, the woman said to the serpent, she, she wants to make it clear that she's in informed. You know, we can never say that Adam didn't tell Eve because Adam's, I mean, Eve is here by herself without Adam, but she's given the information to the serpent about what God said. God didn't tell her. He told Adam, but Adam obviously shared this information from her. We may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say, 
She wants to let her know, let him know, let, let, let the serpent know. God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. That's amazing that that information is in there. And so what happened is the serpent says you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman. So they begin to question God's authority. That they question God's authority, whether 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 his integrity was intact. That he just said this, but that's not really going to happen to you. Uh, and, and we know the story. We know what happened. The the woman uh, Eve ate from the fruit, and, and 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 you know when you get involved in disobedience and sin, it tends to be good. It tends to have an attraction. It tends to satisfy the flesh, um, and, and, and at least at first. Because usually what's good to you in the beginning ends up not being good for you. And, and as it did in this case, it, it causes destruction. So, so from this point, not only did she, uh, she took it to Adam. And, and him being the one who was given the instruction, he ate too. He ate too. And we know what happened at this point. The relationship changed. Not just, not just Adam and Eve's relationship. But the relationship between God and man changed. The relationship between man and woman changed. Man died. Mankind, both male and female, died on, at this moment, a spiritual death. Man became disconnected from God because of his disobedience. Page 139 of our book tells us that Adam and Eve fell because they became dissatisfied with their position. They, they wanted to be something more than they were, and they allowed outside interference, outside influence. The Satan came in and told them, you're not in the right position. You deserve more. They became dissatisfied with their position and roles. They stopped looking to their creator for their purpose and instead looked to themselves. They thought they knew their purpose Better than God did. How, how often? Man, that's, that's almost universal. That's almost universal. In Romans 1 and 22, it says, although they claim to be wise, they became fools. We, we, we tend to want to act like we know uh, better for ourselves as opposed to what Scripture says. Because as men and women... We think we know what's best for ourselves. We reject God and our true reason for being. We, we get outside of God. We get outside of our true purpose. And, and we reject God's uh, order in our lives. And as a result, we suffer the loss of the blessing of God. And we see this over and over and over again. When we get outside of God... We suffer the consequences. When the Israelites were led by a prophet, they were okay. They were winning all the battles. They were, they were conquering Canaan. And when they decided they wanted to be like the world, they wanted to have a king like everybody else, and they got Saul, and they rejected God. And then when Saul was unable to walk the walk that he needed to walk to lead the people, the people fell, and it ended up in the destruction of Israel and the temple that Solomon built. It ended up with the Jews being in exile, with us being in exile, our ancestors, not wanting to walk according to our true purpose, thinking we know, I know what's best for me, and that what's best for me is not lined up with Scripture. You know, I think this is one of the most powerful statements that I have come across lately. Satan is afraid of the power of a man and a woman united in God's purpose. Satan is afraid of the power of a man and woman doing what he designed them to do in his in, in, in Christian uh, godly unity according to the word of God. Unstoppable in that position. And Satan has entered the world to do everything he can to disrupt that, to distract that, to attack that, to cause us to go in other directions. 
you know, God's purpose, God's design for man has not changed. Both men and women, our design, our purpose, what he intended for us has not changed. God is still the same. He says, I do not change. You know, he tells us he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of a man that he should repent. He said it. He'll do it. He meant it. And if we stand on his promises and walk in his precepts, we will survive. Not just survive, we'll succeed and thrive. So the, so the question is, how do we fix this brokenness that has happened? How do we go back and fix what happened in the Garden of the Eden? Well, in the Garden of Eden, well, God had an answer for that. Most of you know what this answer is. God sent Jesus. We can't fix it any other way but to follow along with the Redeemer that God sent, and that's Jesus. When we accept the forgiveness that Jesus offers through our faith in his life, death, and resurrection, it becomes our answer and our way to regenerate and renew, to reconcile our relationship back to God. Jesus is the answer, not just for any one problem, but for every problem that we have today. If we would walk in God's precepts through faith, you can't walk perfectly, but through faith we can walk perfectly. That would provide our answer. We've lost, as people, a, a, an understanding of what dominion actually means. The desire to dominate this, this desire to be in charge, this desire to, to have everything under my feet, it doesn't just affect men. It affects women too. I think it affects children. I think it affects all living beings. They want to be in charge. They want to be rise above their, their standing. standing. But, but this is a men's class. And so as opposed to talking about women wanting to be in charge, let's just deal with the men and their issues with regard to domination as opposed to dominion. As men, we, we seem to have lost the concept of shared responsibility and respect. And because we've lost the understanding of our true purpose and our desire to be the head, we have the tendency not just to undervalue women, but to devalue women. As men, we have a tendency in our trying to be the man that we devalue our women, which prevents both men, prevents us and them from achieving and fulfilling their true purpose in God. Uh, men, we have, and, and, and we all have this, no matter who we are, we have a fear of appearing weak. We don't want to appear weak under no circumstances. Um, some of us, some of us go to the gym. We we build muscle. We we make sure that we're we're strong. We go we go and we take up dis different disciplines in terms of self defense, and we make sure that that we we can fight. We make sure that we can protect. We make sure that we're not gonna get caught off guard, or like we say, get caught slipping. You know, we're aware, we teach our children to keep their head on a swivel. You know, we sit with our back to the wall. We make sure that we walk the entrances. We don't want to look weak under no circumstances. And, and the truth be told, it is that ideology uh, keeps a lot of us men from coming into the church. Because the church is all about submission to another man. That's how it looks physically. And it blocks us from being able to come in and submit to a power that's greater than us under all circumstances. We don't want to feel weak. You know, we have muscle, but we're weak in our mind. We're weak in our hearts. We're weak in our discipline. We, we, we've forgotten all about the Bible word temperance. You know, we're weak in our responsibilities. We're weak in our spirit because we're disconnected from our maker. But there's a difference between power and strength. The truth is, whenever you have to take your position by force, you've moved out of legal authority. When, when, when you have to, to, to take your headship 
by force. You, you have to come in and, and tell them who you are and make them submit through, through force. Your, 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 your authority is illegal. You know, we have a distorted men. We have a distorted view of submission. Our view of submission is, is, is distorted. I, when I think of, in general, in a worldly way of submission, I, I think about the wrestling match where they, 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 they tap out. You know, I think submission uh, is synonymous with giving up. You know, but, but that's, not, that's not what submission means. Submission means to willfully give your will to another. Submission is a willful act. It's not a, it's not a, you can't take my will. I have to give my will. It, it, you know, and, and so we look at, at scriptures like, like, like pastor preached Sunday, Colossians, what is it? 3 and 18, you know, or Ephesians 5 and 22, wives submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. The world today does not it, it, it does not support that word submit because there's a distorted view, a distorted uh, definition of the word submit. And, and, and then we learn, we, we take everything out of context. You know, I, 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 I remember somebody saying con scripture without context is a con. You, you know, we, and, and we take it out of context. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband as unto the Lord. But I think you need to understand is these it, it titles right at the beginning of this section of scriptures. It titles it instructions for the Christian household. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we have to recognize that the context of scripture is God's people. The context of scripture is that wives submitting yourself to your husband is that you're submitting yourself to a godly man. And then we have to stop and look back at that. And, and husbands, when you're picking your wife, are you picking a godly woman? Wives, when you're picking your husband, when you're dating that man, husbands, when you're dating that woman, are you dating a godly woman? Are you dating a godly man? You're out of order if you're not. If you are a Christian, the, the, the order is to, to be equally yoked. And it's impossible to be equally yoked with a non-believer. It's impossible. You are destined for failure. It could be every now and then uh, that the wife is able to to, to sanctify the husband through her faith and he may come running at some point and say, I want to be saved because of the example who she is. But there's a lot of suffering in that process. And, 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 and there's a lot of failure in that process. We always hear the story of, baby, I'm going to make him the man I want him to be, or, or man, I'm going to make her the wife I want him to be. And, and it doesn't work out because at the end of the day, I don't personally believe that if you're not connected to God, that you have the ability to love in that fashion. You have the ability to forgive in that fashion. If you're not connected to a source of power that's greater than you and your ego, it's impossible to plug in and, and be able to live in a godly fashion or have godly leadership. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of the church, the husband is the head of the wife. Ooh, he sets what an order. Sets a high bar there. The husband is the head of the wife. He's my head. That's, but, but you should have such a degree of honor to be able to be in union as God uh, ordained to be in that relationship. And, and then we miss the part where it says, Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands love your wives just as Christ Love the church. Men, this is for you to love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And then it says, and he gave himself up for her. What that means is he loved the church to the point where he willfully submitted to the humiliation of the cross in order that the church might live. He died and submitted humiliate and, and endured humiliation on the cross. And that's the example of husband and wife relationship. The wife submits to the husband, but the husband loves the wife more than he loves himself. That's where we got to be. And I know in order to get there, you got you to gotta, you gotta have God. 
You got to have God. You got to be able to walk in this on a daily basis to have this. Submission has nothing to do with force. You can't take it. Godly submission to get into this uh, and the order and obedience of God's will has nothing to do with force. It's an act of will. A man, you know, then, then, then for men, we, you shouldn't quote a scripture to a woman unless you're behaving like Jesus does. If you're not walking in, in, in scripture, if you're not walking a life that, that benefits the, the title of Christian, the title of saved, if you're not trying to live saved, that don't mean you're perfect. It means that you're walking to the best of your ability, allowing yourself to be sanctified and instructed by the Holy Spirit, submitting yourself to the will of God on a daily basis, whereas when you recognize, when you're submitting yourself to the will of God on a daily basis, when you make an error, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts you. And, 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 and you will come running back to apologize for that error because you want to be in right relationship with God. When you get in right relationship with God, what you don't want to be is out of relationship with God. So when the Holy Spirit convicts us to our wrong, it causes us to go back and to ask for forgiveness, to get right. Real men don't demand respect. Real men don't have to order you into submission. Real men deserve respect and they earn respect based on how you live. You want to get respect? You want to you want you want to you want to have dominion as opposed to uh, try to exercise domination, then, then you got to you got to exercise some activities like you got to love like Jesus. What does that mean? You got to love like Jesus. You, you got to be willing to go all the way. You never heard Jesus tell you what you have to do. He told you what you should do. What, if, you, if, you, if you want to do this, this is what you do. But we always have free will. You got to be willing to love like Jesus. You got to treat your wife, your women, your daughters, your, the people around you, if you want to have dominion, dominion is, is synonymous. Dominion has me imagine power, that, that I'm in charge, that, that, that God has given me this kingdom that I have dominion over. If you want to have dominion, then you got to have people come to you. I learned a lesson in a volunteer organization, uh, being elected president. I'm used to being the the, the owner of Austin and Associates, but but I became the president of this organization. And, and, and in Austin and Associates, if you didn't do what I said, then I would fire you. You know, I would I would disconnect you from me because this was my kingdom uh, that I dominated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, in this organization, I learned that it was voluntary, that it was free will. And the people had to believe in me and that I had to show myself worthy. And, and, and when doing that, then they gave me uh, dominion. They gave me the authority that I needed to make decisions based on the fact that I deserved it based on my actions and understanding that it was a group effort. You know, we got to learn to live like Jesus, love like Jesus. Then we have to, and this is difficult, we got to forgive like Jesus. We got to forgive. Man, it's hard. It, it is difficult to forgive until I think about it. Until I think about it. If When I really get down in it and I think about how Jesus forgave me. When I think about how I repeatedly did and the same wrong things. Repeatedly over and over. And I'd ask for forgiveness and I'd do it again. And I'd ask for forgiveness and I'd do it again. And I'm subject to have to ask for forgiveness. And I'm subject to do it again. And I know that he's faithful to forgive me. Can you forgive those who submit themselves to you where you have dominion? Can you earn it that way? And you know, Pastor, I heard you say, when you're in that position, you have to create an environment where they can be their absolute best. Can you create an environment of forgiveness and love where the people who are under you who have submitted, who have willfully given themselves 
uh, your, their will to you, can you create an environment for them to not just survive, but to thrive and be the best that they can be? And then can you listen like Jesus? Okay, you know, it's hard. You know, I, I think I know what you're going to say. So before you finish your sentence, I'm ready. I'm helping you finish it. it it's, it's hard to listen to the end. It's hard to listen. It's hard to listen. Usually when somebody's talking, we are thinking about what it is we're going to say based on what we think they're going to say. We're not listening. We, 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 if we're going to have true dominion, we're going to have to learn how to listen. We're going to have to learn how to listen, and then we're going to have to learn how to care like Jesus. And how did Jesus care? He cared about the physical. He cared about the emotional. He cared about the spiritual. He cared all the way through. We're going to have to learn how to care like Jesus. When we, when, when we want to have dominion, when we want to have kingship, leadership, when, when we want to get to where... We, we're doing it the way God intended for it to be. We're going to have to learn how to exhibit this. When we want to see our wives submit ourselves to us, to us husbands, then us husbands need to love them like Christ loved the church. And this is how he treats the church. Men and women are created equal. Men aren't created better than women. Men and women are created equal. God created them at the same time. Male and female created he them. Uh, the physical side, the spiritual side, the essence of man and woman got created at the same time. The physical side got created a little later. The purposeful side. Men and women are created equal, but we are different. We both have dominion. Mankind was given a, a, a task. Mankind, males have dominion, females have dominion. That assignment is the same. What's different is that men and women have different purposes. Our, our, our designs are different, our bodies are different, but our authority is manifested in different ways. We both have a dominion assignment. He told us to be fruitful and multiply and take dominion over the earth, over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, and everything that crawls on the earth. He told us to take dominion over it. Lastly, God isn't going to abandon the male's leadership responsibility God is not going to abandon men, your leadership responsibilities for the sake of changing cultural attitudes. What does the book mean when it says this? Uh, we live in a strange times, in strange times right now. Um, we have uh, the women's liberation movement uh, that has impacted and affected uh, everything that, I, that, that, that we come in contact with. We, we have other types of movements uh, that don't line up with what I think Scripture says. God created us with a purpose. God created us with a design in mind, and it was perfect. I'm one who takes the Bible literally. And when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to Scripture, I'm two things, fundamental and conservative. I, I think that the Bible means what it says. I think that if we adhere to the, to the, to the design in the Bible, that, that, that we will get what God promised. I think his promises are real. I think his promises are true. I don't think that God designed man one way or designed the world one way, and now it's something different. I think God created mankind with man being the as mankind being the species and then genders, and we each have different purposes to fulfill the true purpose of God. I think if we find a way to operate, to, to, to matriculate, in what God created, that we will see magnificent and wonderful change in our environment and in our society. 
I think that man was separated from God and that Satan walks around looking who he can destroy and his method of destruction is by separation. I do believe that Satan is deathly afraid of what happens when man and woman come together in God's purpose. And I think it's up to us men to initiate that change. If you want to be the leader, then you got to put your foot first, forward first. It's up to us men to stand up and be the men that God created us to be so that we may have dominion in this world. When I look it up, when I look up Webster's dick definitions, there's very little de difference between dominion and domination. But they both have the same synonyms. They both have some of the same definitions under both sides. And I've come to believe that dominion and, and domination, the difference is God. When, it, when it's God involved, you get dominion. When it's, when it's not God, when it's flesh involved, you have to dominate. And domination ha usually ends up in destruction. All people who dominate others end up with an overthrow when the next strong man comes along. When you have dominion, that's ordained by God. And all the power, authority, sway, influence, and everything that goes with dominion is forever. Dominion versus domination. We have to realize that God's purposes and God's design are intact they're always, they're forever, and they're still the same. We thank God for allowing us to recognize this. And, 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 and truth is, that's about as good as it gets for, for, for this, for, what, for domination and, and dominion. Are there any questions? Any statements? Pastor, you have something you want to say? No? <laughs> no? no. no. God is good tonight. Um, we thank God for his word. Uh, Father, we thank you for allowing us to teach this lesson. We thank you for the, the, what you are showing us and what you are telling us and what you are building, Father, for the word that you're planting in us. And we ask, Father, that it be water, that it grow, that it take root, and, and that, that we're able to reap the harvest, God. We thank you for all that you're doing. We, we, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to take the opportunity. I don't know who's watching. I don't know if you're online. But, but if you don't know Christ, today is a good day for you to get to know Christ. And if you're online and, and you want to know Christ, you want to know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, you want to know about this God, this life, that this strength that we have the power to tap into, if you just type in salvation, we'll have somebody contact you and pray with you and, and, and make sure that, that, that you are able to, to, to join us in this Christian road. We also want to tell you that this is a great place to be a member of. This is a great group of both, not just men, but women. Uh, we have a great pastor uh, to, to be a part of this ministry. And, and if you want to join this ministry tonight, this, this night, this Thursday night, is a good time to do that too. You can type in all in. If you type in all in, we'll contact you and make sure that we get in fellowship with you. Um, as we get ready to go, if there's any names, anybody who needs prayer, uh, any, any healing, they say, if you, if you have sickness, then bring it to the elders, bring it to the church, and, and let us pray for you. But whatever it is that you need prayer for, God is a God that can set you free. He can heal you. He can deliver you. He can prosper you. He can grow you. And, and, and we can pray, and God is faithful that he answers prayer. We are a praying church. So type in the names, and we'll make sure to add those names on our prayer list. Thank you for joining us in our Thursday night Men of David Bible study, Dominion versus Domination. Uh, we are grateful to be part of the God's dominion purposes. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen.